الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters we have commenced the new year 1442. We are in the month of Muharram, which is the first month of the Islamic calendar. It is a month, the name of which is very clear. It has to do with something haram, something prohibited. So what is haram and why is this month called Muharram? Let's take a look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. إن عدة الشهور عند الله اثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم. Indeed, the number of months in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa taala is twelve. The day that He created the heavens and the earth. From among them, there are four that are haram. Haram meaning prohibited. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, explains that the prohibition of commencing war, the prohibition of killing things, of causing harm, destruction, etc. These are sacred months. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So if someone were to attack you, during the months that are known as Al-Hurum. And one might ask, well, what are the other three? Muharram is one of them. Rajab is another one of them. And then you have Dhul Qida and Dhul Hijjah, which are the two months preceding Muharram. So if someone were to attack you during those months, you're allowed to defend yourself and to attack back. But you're not allowed to commence any form of disturbance or warfare. Be alert and be awake more than other months. Make sure that you are at peace, not only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but even with others. And make sure you go out of your way to achieve that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Similarly, in this month, which is the first of the Islamic calendar, people generally look at resolutions and they ask themselves, what should I be doing? It's the new year, it's the end of the previous year, etc. My brothers and sisters, as Muslims, we're supposed to be making resolutions every night. We're supposed to be renewing our vows to, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night. We're supposed to be seeking forgiveness every night. We're taught to make sure when we go to bed, we make peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a supplication that you and I are supposed to be reading before going to bed every night. And part of it is that, oh Allah, if you take my soul away in my sleep, then have mercy on it. And if you send it back, then, meaning if you allow me to awaken in the morning, then protect me in the same way that you protect the pious friends of yours or the pious slaves of yours. From this supplication, we do recognize and we should be recognizing that we have no guarantee of waking up the following morning. We should be making peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day. Seek forgiveness. Promise Allah you're going to be a better person. Never give up. If you've fallen into sin again and again, you need to go back to Allah again and again and again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a beautiful returning to Him. So people sometimes only specify resolutions for the end of the year. That's not something that should be once a year. It should be, as I explained, very often. Similarly, we also need to understand that the years are clicking. They are clicking away. They are ticking away. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. We're becoming closer to the day we're going to be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say 1442, yes, we're excited that the years are passing. But we should also be equally concerned, if not more, 
about what we have done to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day that he takes us away. What have I done? What have you done to present to Allah? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. O you who believe, be conscious of the Almighty, develop the correct relationship with Allah. And each one of you should be looking into what you have prepared to hand in tomorrow. Subhanallah. Tomorrow meaning when you meet with Allah, what are you going to give him? All your deeds you've done. Good news to those who are going to give a lot of istighfar or repentance or tawbah, turning back to Allah, seeking forgiveness from Allah. If you have a lot of that on your slate and you're going to be presenting that to Allah, good news to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, the month of Muharram, yes, as much as it is the first month of the Islamic calendar, we need to realize it has a certain value. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, towards the end of his life, used to fast a lot in the month of Muharram. So while we do have the fasting of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, which were the first 10 days, which we spoke about in the past, we do have the compulsory fasting of Ramadan. The Dhul Hijjah fasts are not compulsory, but they hold great value. The fast of Arafah holds great value. And the fasts of Muharram also hold great value with the 10th of Muharram being the peak of these fasts, subhanallah. So what exactly happened on the 10th of Muharram? When the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina Munawwara, he found that the Jewish community used to fast on the 10th of Muharram. And when he inquired about it, he was told, this is the day that the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, was saved from the Pharaoh. The day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the Pharaoh to die. If you take a look at that, my brothers and sisters, it was something very interesting. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made a comment immediately. He says, we should be following or we should be more happy about the saving of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, than the Jews. Subhanallah, he's obviously a prophet of Islam and he's obviously one of the great five prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. And he says we should be fasting as well. And in order to be slightly different, we're encouraged to fast two days, the ninth and the tenth. So the tenth holds great value. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says whoever fasts on the tenth, perhaps their sins of this year would be forgiven, which means the previous year. The sins of the previous year would be forgiven. Here, referring to the minor sins, they are forgiven. So let's try our best to fast on the 10th and to add the 9th in order to be slightly different. So the 10th, yes, we should be fasting. The 9th, we should add it because that was the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If for some reason you can only fast the 10th, it's fine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to fast both on the 9th and the 10th. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every single one of us. However, this depicts the victory of the oppressed over the oppressor. It also depicts the defeat of the oppressor no matter how powerful he thinks he is. So we should be pondering for a moment and we should be thanking Allah and we should have hope in Allah. If someone has wronged you, they've oppressed you, they've blackmailed you, they've done something, they've usurped your wealth, they keep on harassing you, whatever else they may be doing, remember triumph will come. Remember they will be defeated. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not oblivious of what is happening. He knows and he is going to deal with the matter decisively. Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, and his people struggled for a long time. But a day came when, much to their disbelief, the Pharaoh was defeated. And he was defeated by water. Subhanallah, Allah used water to drown him. And he was so strong, so powerful, yet he was defeated. So those who are oppressed, don't worry. The day will come 
And it is coming and it's very near when you will see victory by the will of Allah. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Those who are oppressors, if you are harming others, you're not going to get away with it. You need to seek forgiveness and make amends before a day comes similar to the day of Fir'aun, the day of Qarun, the day of Haman, and the day of Ubay ibn Khalaf. Those were the people who thought they would never ever see any bad day, difficult day, or a day of punishment, but they were punished in such a way that their examples are given to this day. So remember, make amends. If you are doing wrong to someone, whether it is in your family, whether it is your circle of friends, whether it is your circle of acquaintances, or just a strange person, no matter what it is, if you are doing wrong, remember, you may get away for a little while, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely not oblivious of it. He is going to come and give triumph to those whom you have oppressed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us triumph over the oppressor. May Allah defeat the oppressor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant goodness to all those who are struggling across the globe. So it is the season of triumph over the oppressor. Don't lose hope, my brothers and sisters. And let's fast in order to celebrate, in order to celebrate the successes that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about. My brothers and sisters, there is another incident that occurred later on 50 years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was martyred on this day as well. And we are saddened by that. We do believe it was a disaster. It was something that should never have happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time we say his name, we actually say, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and his entire family, his household, his companions. And we're including al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu. Anhuma, actually, he is the son of one of the greatest of the Khalifs, one of the four, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiyallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with them. So what do we learn from this? Firstly, we learn that sometimes hypocrites make us fight amongst each other and we're not supposed to be. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has...